Praise God. I'm going to finish the series off this week on blessed. And um, as, as John already spilled the beans, I'm not going to tell him anymore. Um, my, my message is called blessed by the tithe. And listen, it, for church people, that can blow right by you if you don't hear what the Spirit of God is saying today. Because I know so many people who go to church who think they're okay, financially they're okay, but they don't tithe. I'm not trying to talk you into tithing today, okay? You know, it sounds a little bit self-serving because I'm the pastor of the church, but if I don't tell you, who's going to tell you? You know, who's going to be? So I'm going to kind of go at this a little bit different way. I got a lot of scripture, so we're going to go through this, and you can write it down or go listen to the message online later, however you want to do it. But I'm going to start in Genesis chapter 12. The Lord spoke to Abram at the time, later Abraham, and told him to get out of his country, from his family, from his father's house, to a land he'd show him. Now listen to what the Lord said to Abraham in verse 2 of Genesis chapter 12. Listen to this. I will make you a great nation. Now listen, I will bless you. You got that? And make your name great. Now here's the last part of it. You ready? And you shall be a blessing. Okay, listen. God wants to bless us. He wants to bless you. And I want to tell you something. If you want to take a poverty vow, go ahead. But I don't want to take a poverty vow because I got lots I need to do for the kingdom of God. Listen to me. And got lots that I know that God wants to do for the kingdom of God. Y'all still here? And I want to be blessed. I want to be able to do my part. I don't want to be just be the pastor trying to get you to do it. I want to be a part. And the only way to do that is to know how to be blessed. And the Lord, now listen, God blessed Abraham on many levels, and I'm going to talk about this, but let me just show you this first. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 18, it says this, Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth, listen to this, shall be blessed by him. All the nations of the earth were blessed by Abraham. You're going to find out why, okay, so just stick with me, but understand that. I'm, I, I, I'm going to read you another scripture in, verse, in Genesis 28, verse 3. It says, may God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you that you may be an assembly of people and give you the blessing of Abraham. That blessing of Abraham is transferable. It was not just for him and his family. It was transferable. I'm going to show you, so just stick with me. Uh, what I'm saying, I'm going to tell, I'm, you're going to hear it several times, but you need to understand it. Listen to, Gen to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Listen to the next verse. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, that's you, unless you're a Jew, in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit, you ready for this? Through faith. 
Okay, so there's a process to this, but you can receive the blessing of Abraham. Now listen to me carefully, okay? The blessing of Abraham is temporal and eternal. Okay, it works in both realms. It's temporal, what we have on this earth, and it is also eternal. And so I'm focusing today on one portion of that, and that's the temporal Because you've got to understand that the temporal and the eternal are all by faith in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that God accounted to Abraham righteousness because he believed God. You study the scriptures and you find out because you believe on Jesus, it accounts you as righteous. That's eternal. Okay. But listen to me, that does not dispose of the temporal blessings. It adds to them. Let me just give you a scripture real quick. Philippians 4.19. You better know this scripture. You ought to know it in your heart, okay? My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. How? By Christ Jesus. That's temporal. Those are temporal. How many of you have needs in your life? How many of you believe God will meet those needs? See, that's where we live our lives. That's how we we live. And you say, well, that's different than, 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 than what I've been taught. Well, read the Bible. Okay? Read the Bible. We're not lesser than Abraham. We're part of the same covenant. And so the blessings are still there. Why does God want to bless us? So that we can be what? A blessing. Listen, I dare dare say every believer in this room today has a heart to do more for God. But we're limited. We're limited by what? Well, you're limited by how much money you've got. I mean, you can give your time, but you only have so much time. But you can also give give money if you have it. And God wants to bless you, listen to me, financially, so you can be a blessing. It's not up to a few people who figured out how to get rich while you hadn't to do the job. It's every believer's responsibility to grab hold of the blessing of God in whatever level you're on, because it talks about whatever you measure out is measured back to you. See, listen, if somebody who has $100 gives 50 of it, that's a pretty good measure. But if somebody has a million dollars and they give $50, that's nothing. That's the way God looks at things. So you being blessed is between you and God, and you being a blessing is from where you are, not where you wish you could be. Everybody still with me? Okay. So it, the temporal blessings and the eternal blessings are all by faith in Christ Jesus and what Jesus has done. But see, sometimes we think we're on a different, in a different place than Abraham. Well, we really are. Because Abraham was never born again. You've been born again. Your spirit is alive unto God. So that puts you on a different level. But just let me throw a few scriptures at you real quick. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 16 says, What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, and I will walk among them, and I will be their God. Listen to me. And they shall be my people. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 10. You were once not a people, but now you're the people of God who have not obtained mercy before, but now we've obtained mercy. So you've got to understand that. You can look at Israel or you can back up and look at Abraham before Israel and you can see somebody that was favored of God and they were, God was with them, but God didn't walk in them. God walks in you by the Holy Spirit. Everybody's still with me. 
So in Leviticus, it talks about this, talking about the children of Israel in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 12. It says, I will walk among you and be your God and you shall be my people. See, he walked among them, but he walks in us. So we're the people of God. You've got to understand that. You've got to know that. And so if you understand that, then you have to understand how God deals with his people. Everybody's still here. So one of the temporal blessings of Abraham is the tithe. Okay, and you've got to hang with me here because I'm going to answer some questions with this today as well. This is not a preaching message. This is a teaching message. You've got to understand it, okay? So listen to what it says in Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30 about the tithe. Okay, just listen to this. Okay, all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree is the Lord's and it is holy. Okay, now I'm going to explain this to you, but let's read the rest of it. If a man wants it all to redeem any of the tithe, that means you want to spend the tithe and pay God later. You got to add one fifth to it. Now that's under the law. I don't believe God intends for that or has, has that purpose in mind at all for us, but it's there. All right, listen to the next verse. And concerning the tithe of the herd of the flock or whatever passes under the rod, listen, the tenth one shall be holy to the Lord. So, so what does that mean? What does it mean like, okay, Lord, it's holy to you. Let me explain it to you. It means it's separated unto him. That tenth, that's what a tithe is, that tenth of all your income, we don't, we don't normally have trees unless you sell pecans in Louisiana or something like that. But, but normally we get cash for our time that we give and our labor that, that we are involved with. Other people have investments, however you want to talk about it, okay? It, it, it's, the first, it, it's income, okay? All right, the first fruit, the income. All right, now listen to this. The first tenth of that is holy or separated unto the Lord, so listen carefully. If you're a believer, if you're God's people, okay, your financial health is tied to the tithe. Okay, now let me explain it to you, okay? Now listen carefully. I'm glad we've already taken up the offering so I won't be accused of preaching this just to take up an offering, okay? <laughs> Listen, I got a revelation of this. Becky and I got a revelation of this when we got saved. And we have tithed every, ever since. Ever since. And I'm telling you, it's amazing how the blessings of God compound over the years as you tithe. It is amazing. It is amazing. Well, we're going through some tough times. Listen, it, the, the tithe guarantees provision no matter what the times. Okay, but now listen to this, and I'm going to just tell you this story real quick. I've said it, shared it before, but, but how many of you ever heard of Kenneth Copeland? Have you ever you've seen him on TV, you know, maybe you know, him, you know his ministry, but, but I was actually having lunch one day uh, with Brother Copeland's dad, A.W. Copeland. He wasn't a minister. He wasn't in the ministry. He was a businessman. He was a salesman, and he was talking about how he lived through the Depression, I wanted to hear it. And so we were talking, he was talking about, you know, having, to, you know, people would come to his house and, and they would leave food out for him or they'd make sure, you know, they could help people and bless people and help them during the, the and he was a salesman. He wasn't you know, a rich man by any stretch of the imagination. He was a salesman. And so one of, the, one of the people that was sitting at the table with him, he said, well, what do you contribute that to? And he said, that's easy, tithing. Tithing got me through the Great Depression. When everybody else didn't have a job, I had one. When everybody else didn't have food, I had food. And he said it was because, he said, even during the Depression, I tithe. I, I brought the tithe to the Lord. Now, now listen, the reason I'm saying that is this. So listen carefully, okay? Your financial is, held, is tied to the tithe whether you choose to tithe or not. If you're a believer, say, so why? Let me tell you why, okay? 
the tithe was meant to be consumed. You ready? It was meant to be consumed. It was not meant to be hoarded. It was not meant to be spent on self. It was meant to be consumed. Okay? Now listen. If you don't tithe, that 10% of your finances is going to be consumed in ways you don't want it to be consumed. I don't understand. That refrigerator isn't but a year old. Are you a tither? Well, no. Well, there's your tithe, there's your tithe right there. I'm not trying to preach doom and gloom to you, but listen to me. Listen. If you don't tithe, it will be consumed because you're God's people. If you're God's people, it's our responsibility. Now, there's a blessing if you do it the right way, and we're going to talk about that, but you've got to understand, you're not saving 10% by not giving it to God. Now, let me just tell you, there's nothing you can do about the past. You can't make up your tithes. If you can, do, but, but more than likely, that's not going to happen, okay? You, so you got to start wherever you are. If you've been convicted by what I'm preaching, which I hope you are, because I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm trying to convict you because you're God's people. See, God, here's the thing about God. He has a totally different way of financing his message, financing his people. He will bless you if you're obedient so then you can bless others. The gospel is not funded by a word of wisdom where he, you can drill an oil well and give, the, give to the gospel because you don't want to tithe. But Lord, if you show me where to drill an oil well, I'll drill that. And That's not the way God works. God expects every person who is a, is a part of the kingdom of God to do their part based on God, how they're blessed and what they have to promote the gospel. That's the way God's always done it. Every businessman I've ever known who went into a project, and I know one particular minister who just figured out a way I'm going to make millions for the kingdom, and so he set aside his ministry to get into the oil business. He lost everything. But his motive was, I'm going to make money for the kingdom. You don't have to make money for the kingdom. Wherever you live, however you live your life, whatever you are, wherever you are right now, listen to me, God can bless you right where you are if you'll do one simple thing. Just tithe. And then there, obviously we want to give above that. Well, you can if you don't have it. But tithing will bring blessing to you so you can be more of a blessing. My tithe today, and, and Becky and I's tithe today, is way more than I made when I started giving. I made up my mind. I tried my best to be the, be the, the number one tither in, in our church, but it's just hard to do because there are some people, they just won't give you a break. <laughs> Amen. So, you just have to understand the, 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 the tithe. It's a, and and you, can, you can choose to believe it or not, but I want to tell you something. It, it would prove out if you went back and looked at your life as a non-tither. The other side of that is if you're a tither and your refrigerator breaks down, God will show you the best deal in town for a new one at half the price of what somebody else would pay for. It. That's just the way the tithe works. That's the blessing of, of the tithe. It, it carries out all in, in your whole life. Now, it's by faith. You've got to accept it and believe and act by faith. But, hey, I can tell you right now, I know I, there's, there's a part of the tithe, I'll read it to you in just a second, where you, if you start claiming it, God can do some great things for you. I've got a friend who did it, so I'll tell you about it. So listen to what Malachi said to the people of God about the tithe and what, and, and what it's about. Now listen to this. Malachi chapter 3. He's talking to the people of God. You say, well, he's talking to the old covenant. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to show you this from the word of God. Because the tithe was before the law. Okay, so listen. 
Listen to what it says in verse 8 of Malachi 3. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. Now, I don't know whether that ought to get your attention or not, but it should. It should. Well, I can't afford to tithe. No, you're not hearing me, are you? No, you can't afford not to. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. How have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Now, that's the Lord speaking. Okay. Now, listen to the next verse. You ready? You're cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me. What, what is the curse that uh, you have robbed me in tithes and offerings? What's the curse? The curse is that that tithe is going to be consumed. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now listen to, the, listen to verse 10. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. I had a man one time get this great revelation, okay? The, I'm going to build my own storehouse. I'm going to get me a, a checking account and call it storehouse, and I'm going to put the tithe in there. Didn't work. You know why? Because that's not the storehouse. It's talking about his house. Not your house, his house. But now here's the thing you've got to see. Try me, uh, the King James says, prove me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. Now, the, now stop a minute, let me, let me explain to you, okay? These are people that have been robbing him. They hadn't been giving their tithes. They hadn't been paying tithes and giving it out of what they've got. They were robbing God, but God said, but I'm going to just wipe that off the slate. I want you to try this. See, I can honestly say to you today, you can try. There are very few things you can just try, but you can try tithing. Because God said, try it. Prove me now. Try it. Try the tithe and he said, if you do, I will open the windows of heaven. Here it is. You ready? And pour out for you such a what? A blessing that there'll not be room enough to receive it. Now, see, I know some of you say, well, I've been tithing for years and that hadn't happened yet. It doesn't mean it's not going to. We had a couple in our church. Her husband died and he had a kind of a meager pension and she worked and and, uh, and, and, and I, I'm, I remember her one time, sweet lady, been in our church for many years. And she said, she said Pastor, I don't understand. I've tithed my whole life and, and uh, I've never seen that poured out blessing yet. And I said, that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And I mean, she was, you know, getting up there. Finally, she just said, well, I, I need to retire. I just don't have the money to retire. Somebody started paying her salary. And paid it till she died. She never had to work another day in her life. Probably 20 years. And somebody paid her salary. You don't know how the tithe is going to work. But it's going to work. And I promise you. in her Where she lived in her life. Her life. She would have said that's open in the windows of heaven. And pouring out a blessing. That there will not be room enough to. to to receive. Now I got to read verse 11. I want you to listen to this. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in your field says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed for you'll be a delightful land says the Lord of hosts. I've got a friend, and uh, he had one of his um, one of his uh, kids that had gotten in uh, had gotten into a physical thing, you know, and and needed needed phys help, you know, had had gotten in some abnormal normalities, and he just started saying, "I'm a tither, I'm a tither. This has to be rebuked in Jesus' name. I'm a tither," and it was. You can't do that if you don't have a revelation of it. It's not going to happen just because I just told you that. But he had a revelation of tithing. Not only would God open the windows of heaven, he'd rebuke the devourer. 
You got to make up your mind how you want to live your life. Well, I'm going to live on the world system. Well, you can see how that's working today. God says, look, forget about the fact that you've been robbing me. I'm not holding that against you. Just prove me now. Try me right now. And you make up your mind to tithe, and, and I will bring the blessing into your life. I'm not going to read, read this, but over at Hezekiah, King Hezekiah returned the people of God to the tithe. They had quit tithing. And so they started tithing. And one day, Hezekiah said, what are all these piles? Now, now listen, this is in the Bible. It's in 2 Chronicles. I'll give you the scripture, 2 Chronicles chapter uh, 31. Where, where did all these piles of silver and all these piles of gold and all these other piles of goods, where did that come from? And the priest, Azariah, said, said this. Let me, read you, let me read you one verse in verse 10 of, of 2 Chronicles 31. And Azariah, the chief priest from the house of Zadok, answered and said, Since the people began to bring the offerings, it was the tithe, okay? Since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of the Lord, we've had enough to eat, have plenty left, for the Lord has blessed his people. And what is, now listen to this, what is left is this great abundance. That doesn't come from me. Doesn't even come from wise management of church affairs. We do, we do good, you know, as far as the church. We manage our affairs. We're, at, we're audited every year. We pay attention to all of that. But that's not where our blessing comes from. It comes because people are tithers. And because we have a heart for world missions and we give to missions. We reach the world with the gospel. We preach the gospel to the world. And I can just tell you, listen, I've had abundance in this church. I've had $5 million in the bank. But it didn't stay there. You know why? Because I'm not supposed to hoard money. This church is not going to hoard money. Now, we have, we have money in the bank, you know, not a huge amount, but we have money in the bank. But the point is, there is an in and an out. There's a flow. And it comes by the tide. That's how God works. You say, what about all missions and all that? Well, that's where you give over and above. That's the offering part, tithes and offerings. Well, the, you know, we don't have the temple anymore. No, we don't. But listen to what it says in Deuteronomy chapter 5. I'm going to help you with this, okay? You shall seek, talking about the tithe, you shall seek the place where the Lord your God chooses Okay, you got it? Now, that's under the Old Covenant. Where the Lord your God chooses. Verse 6. There you'll take the offerings, the sacrifices, the tithe, the heave offerings, your vowed offerings, your free will offerings, your firstborn offerings of the flock. In other words, that's where you bring it. Where do you bring it? You bring it to where God has put his, has put his name. So if you're a member of this church, this is where God's put his name for you. Well, I send my tithe to brother so-and-so from TV. No, no. You may be sending him an offering, but you're not sending your tithe. You're not tithing. You, you've got a tithe where you know the kingdom of God's being, well, I don't want to get into that. Okay. God's house is his church. Okay, and it doesn't matter whether it's this house or another house, but surely you wouldn't come to this church and send your tithe to another church. Do you know we actually have people who haven't found church homes in different places and they, send, they still send their tithes here? And God's blessing them. But my prayer is that they find a church wherever they are and tithe to that church. And that's happened as well. All right? All right, now listen to me because this, this is... The last part, but it's very important, and you need to understand this because this is where people always want to get into big arguments about. I don't have to tithe; it's it's under the it's under the law. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's part of the blessing of Abraham. It's part of the blessing of Abraham. It's an operation of faith, not of law. It's not legalistic. 
God's not going to kill you if you don't tithe. You're just not going to get the blessing of it so you can be blessed and bless others. Okay? Now listen to this scripture in Genesis chapter 14, verse 18. It's very important that you hear this. Okay? Listen. Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and water, wine. He was the priest of God most high, and he blessed Abraham. Blessed be Abraham of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. Blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hands. And listen to what Abraham did. And Abraham gave him a tithe of all the spoils from the raids that he had gone on. He, he tithed. Abraham tithed. And he tithed to a high priest. His name was Melchizedek. Okay. Melchizedek was around before Aaron and the priesthood was ever created, where Leviticus was ever created, the law was ever created. Abraham tithes of all. Part of the blessing was that Abraham was a tither. Melchizedek was a priest of the day, and literally, and I'm going to show you this from the Word, he was a type of the priesthood of Jesus, who's our high priest. And that was before the law. So listen to Hebrews chapter 7. I've got to read a portion of Scripture here, but it'll help you. Talking about this Melchizedek, verse 1, chapter 7. This Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and he blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. To the high priest, first being translated king of righteousness, then also king of Salem or king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made, you ready for this? Like the son of God, he remains a priest Continually. A lot of people believe it was Jesus. A lot, of, a lot of, of, of Bible scholars really believe that Melchizedek was Jesus. He brought bread and wine. What did Jesus break before he went to the cross? What did he serve before he went to the cross? Okay. Now let, follow me here. Listen to what it says. Now consider how great this man was, whom even Abraham, the patriarch, gave a tenth of the spoils. And indeed, those who are the sons of Levi, which is the law, who receive the priesthood, have a commandment, now listen to this, to receive tithes from the people according to the law. That is, from the brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them, the Levites, received tithes from Abraham and what did he do? Blessed him who had the promises. That's going to be important, so hang on with that, okay? Now, beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the greater, the better. Now, now listen to this statement. Now, here... Mortal men receive tithes. By the way, Hebrews was written after the resurrection. Okay. But there he receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives. He's talking about Jesus. Jesus is alive. You got it? So here's the thing you've got to understand. The priest received the tithe. Blessed Abraham, who had the promises, and we found out by faith. All right? So now listen to Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say unto seeds as of many, but as to one, 
to your seed. That's Jesus, who is Christ. You got it? Okay, now hang with me, all right? Because you got to hear this. You got to hear this next verse, verse thirty, uh, verse thirty-nine of Galatians three. If you are in Christ, then you, as a believer, as a people of God, are Abraham's seed. You ready for this? Heirs according to the promise. Can I say it this way? Heirs according to the promise of the blessing of the tithe. Because the tithe started with Abraham. I'll never forget, I was preaching in uh, uh, Russia right after communism fell. And I've never seen a more legalistic bunch of people in my whole life. That's all they could hold on to was their legalism. There was no move of the spirit there. They were dead as a doornail. And I had all these pastors at at a church. And um, I don't know, there were probably 200 pastors there, maybe 250 pastors there. And and they 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 still had that that um, communist bondage and fear. They had a door downstairs, and I noticed they kept it locked. And they every time I'd walk by there, they made sure that door was shut. So guess what I did during the service? I went back down there. I wanted to find out what was behind that door. <laughs> you know what was there? Food. They didn't want me to know that they had all this food because they thought if I knew they had food, maybe I wouldn't help them. That kind of mentality. So I'm preaching and I talked about tithing and one of the pastors, tithing is of the law. I mean, he stood up right in the middle of all of them. Tithing is under the law. And I just put my hands like this and I said, Abraham tithed. Tithing is under the law. Abraham tithed. He said it about four times, and every time he said it, his volume went down a little bit. Till finally he just sat down and shut up because he got it. <laughs> he got it. That the tithe, actually, the tithe goes way back. It goes back further than that. It goes back to Adam and Eve and their sons. Okay, I don't want to get into that. All right, so if you're in Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, let me read you verse 17 real quick, just so you can say this. And this I say that the law, which was 430 years later after Abraham, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. Tithing has promise. It was before the law and it exists after the law. So, pastor, what's the difference? The difference is we have a new high priest. And his name is Jesus. So listen, really, when you bring your tithe to worship with it, you're not bringing it to the church, you're not bringing it to me. You're actually bringing it to your high priest who lives forever. That's how powerful the tithe is. You're offering it up into the eternal realm by sowing it into the kingdom of God, into the work of God, into the things of God. Once you get a revelation of that, And let me just tell you, I know this sounds really carnal, what I'm about to say, okay? Once you get a taste of the results of the tithe, you're hooked. You're hooked because it's amazing. Does it mean you're going to have difficulty? You might have difficulty, but it's just like A.W. Copeland said, just keep tithing. I mean, he tithed through the depression. You You can tithe through your tight spot. Well, I need to pay my bills, tithe. Well, I know, but I got pills to tithe. Listen, Becky and I went through a time in our life many number of years ago now, 35 years ago or so, we were struggling financially. We were tithing, but we were struggling financially. And, and uh, I got stuck owing some people money. Actually, I'd be honest with you, I, I, built, I, I built the house that we're living in today. And, and, uh, uh, and 
I, I, I kind of overdid it a little bit, you know, and I, so I owed several people money and, and, I, and I didn't have the money to pay them. And I, and I had the tithe. I could have paid one of them. Okay, or at least paid. And I, and, but here's, I said, Lord, you got to show me what to do. I do not want to quit tithing. I know that's where my blessing comes from. I need to know what do I do? And the Lord said, just go to each one of them and just give them what you can and, and, and tell them I will pay you everything I owe you. So that's what I did. Now, I'm not promoting that. Okay, we want to pay our bills, but that's where I was. And I wasn't going to quit tithing. If I, and, and I told the Lord, I don't want to lose respect from people because I don't pay my bills. So I went to all three of those people and I told them, look, here's where I am. I, I overextended building this house, but if you'll give me a little time, I promise you, I'll pay you every penny I owe you. Every dime I owe you, I'll pay you every dime I owe you. And I, two of them, no problem. That'll be fine. They knew I was a pastor, but they said, don't, don't worry. Pay, you can pay it when you can. The third one doubted me. He doubted me. The other two, I just mailed them a check, you know, every month. And it was a little bit le you know, le less than what I owed them, but I paid a little bit on The third one, I took him cash and put it in his hand every time. Because <laughs> I wanted him to know I was paying it. And, and every, he said, you don't have to do that. I got it. And I said, no, I'm giving you cash. Every, every month I'd go take that cash to him. It took, I think it was four months and I, and I paid him every dime. But I couldn't let go of that tithe because I knew that was my source of blessing. And I was not going to be able to be a blessing if I didn't hang with it and know that God would do something. And thank God he does and he will. Now, let me just tell you this, and I'm finished, okay? So just hang with me just a minute, okay? Abraham, what made him special was that Abraham walked by faith, okay? The Bible tells us that we are to walk in the same steps that Abraham walked. That's faith, to walk by faith. So you give the tithe by faith. You don't give it under a legal obligation, afraid God's going to kill you. You do it because you know that's where your blessing is. And if that's where your blessing is, you know that's where you can receive so you can be a blessing Amen. to others. But it has to be an act of your faith. So you bring it into the house of God. You bring the tithe into the... You don't... Listen... You don't get to decide where you bring the house of God, uh, bring your, your tithe. You bring it to the house of God where you worship. I could spend another hour. I think I will. No, I won't. <laughs> Showing you that that's the case. It's where you're fed. It's where you're fed. Now, look, if you're a guest today and you think I preach this every week, I don't. You just happen to catch this week and hopefully it'll be a blessing to you. But, but listen, we, we, as a church, okay, just listen to this. We, we, as a church, have a big message to a big world. Big message to a big world. And I, I, I just want to tell you, it costs money. It costs money. I just got a text message from an evangelist that we support who just had a meeting in South Sudan, and over 40,000 people got saved in the Crusades. We paid, for, we, we paid for part of that. So, so it, it's not about hoarding money. It's not about getting money. It's not about a glamour gospel. It's about being blessed so that you can bless the world. So you can be a blessing. That's where I want to live my life. I want that. I want to be a blessing. I want to be blessed. Sure, I do. I'm not. I'm not saying I do. I want to be blessed, but not because. Listen, not because I'm hooked on carnal things, and I want to be blessed so I can be a blessing. And when you make up your mind to live that lifestyle, it's amazing what the Lord lets you keep. 
He'll bless you. But you've got to realize that if you want to be blessed in this world, in this life, I mean, look, you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you're blessed because you're going to heaven. You've got eternal life. That's, hey, that, that's far above anything. But you've got to live on this earth. Why not live it God's way? Bring the tithe. And, and the, here's the thing. Listen, just say, all right, now, Lord, you said in your word. You said this, Lord, so I'm going by what you, this is what Pastor Sam said. This is what you said. You said to try you, so I'm bringing the tithe of my next check, whether it's the one you're fixing to get or whenever it is, however you want to do it. And I am going to prove, I'm going to try you in this because you said I could. You may not see something just poured out on you, but I, I know the worst case scenario, you're going to see an uptick in your blessing. And the more you see it, the more it'll come. I have total confidence because that's what God said in His Word. And He's not a respecter of persons. It's for, it's for anyone. I know people in this church and I've watched them. And listen, I don't look at the finances of the church. I couldn't tell you more, most of the time, I could not tell you how much you give. This, and, and right after COVID and we started missing people, I wanted to find out because I figured if they're not giving, they ain't coming and they're not committed. And I looked at it then, not from a monetary standpoint, but just to see who, who was not here and who was there. I found out most people are still here somewhere. They're just not in church. But here's the point. Okay, It's not about me judging you about what you give, how much you give. But I have watched people that I've been around long enough here in this church and I've watched people who've been here for years and I've watched them start to tithe and I've watched God work in their life. I could point out people today. I won't, but I could. That God supernaturally blessed simply because they made up their mind to be blessed with the tithe. So I want to encourage you today. If you're not tithing, do so. If you are, you ought to testify about it. You ought to tell people what God does for you because of it. Because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, He's blessed you. Because His Word says so. Doesn't mean you might not have some challenges in your life. Just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. You'll see the blessing. It's, it's yours. It'll come. Father, I pray right now over every person. I pray that they hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. That this is something you desire for us, for blessing, so that we can be a blessing. Thank you that we are Abraham's seed through Christ Jesus. And we receive the blessings of Abraham. They belong to us. And we thank you for it, Father. Father, I pray right now for every person under the sound of my voice. If they don't know your son Jesus today, or they've not been serving you the way they know they should, I pray right now that you speak to their hearts, and you lead them to a place of life in your son Jesus every day. And I praise you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.